Welcome everyone. It's, uh, it, today is September 29th, 2020. And I'm Joe Weston and we're here for our weekly online global practice for reviving the global heart. It's really always lovely to see familiar faces and it's very exciting to see new faces. We gather, um, we've been gathering for over two years with this practice, building this community for people who are holding in their hearts the possibility of a world that could actually manifest lasting peace. And we call ourselves uh, midwives for a system that's kind of fading away and a new system that is emerging and, and we can hold space for that. And that, uh, that requires from, from those who know what a midwife or a doula is, requires a lot of resilience, a lot of presence, a lot of care, a lot of fierce compassion and we, we gather every week to actually support each other in cultivating that in a time where uh, it's greatly needed on this planet and where the planet itself greatly needs us to step more into our power and our resilience and our sense of fierce compassion. And it's great to see new faces. And, 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 um, and, and we always say that you're all, all, all are welcome when we gather from around the world, certainly from various parts of North America and um, various parts of Europe, as well as other parts of the world, in support of one another, as I said, building community. And I'm very excited for this session. This is where we're launching a new idea that uh, every third practice, we're inviting someone to come uh, to speak and share their wisdom. And um, I have met so many brilliant people uh, in my time traveling around the world. And for me, I couldn't think of anyone better that to start this off with than uh, my dear friend, Myra Jackson. And I'll say very briefly who she is. Uh, she's, she's an incredible spiritual practitioner, first of all. And um, she's currently on the board of the Fierce Civility Project, which I'm involved with. There's so much to say about her. She is currently, uh, she, her devotion to the planet itself um, is beyond measure. And uh, she's involved with the UN Harmony with, uh, with Nature at the moment, advocating uh, with, with, within the UN to advocate for a word that I phrase that I'm finding interesting, Earth Jurisprudence, the rights for the Earth itself. And she is also the diplomat of the biosphere for the Stockholm Resilience Center. So I'm just throwing out a couple of those things that, that I know. And, 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 and as I said, someone devoted from the heart to, to the benefit of all beings and particularly all beings and this planet itself. So Myra, I'd like to give you a chance to share this question of what does it mean to revive the global heart or how would you like to, to phrase that before we get into our practice? Well, what a beautiful question. Um, I really have a clear response to that. I think maybe a few years ago I might have uh, stumbled on it. But I, I just want to let you know where I'm at right now. Right now, as I'm speaking to all of you, and I noticed that Laura Madden is here. She mentioned she was here. She's my, um, together we're bringing a Global Freshwater Summit to the United States, of which Joe will be a part of bringing fierce civility into. And the Global Freshwaters itself is an important part of my response. The global fresh waters themselves represent about two and a half percent in total of the 71% of the water that covers the earth. And the 71% of water that covers the earth is represented in our bodies elementally. And the fresh waters in terms of the earth's body is the one system that is, has the ability to recover and regenerate. And so within us, we have in the same measure, the ability to recover and regenerate. But what are we recovering? There's a sense that there is an essential nature to all life. And the waters, the fresh waters of this planet in this body of the earth gives us access through conveyance, the information that helps reset 
and restore our original design or our deep essential nature. And for me, reviving the global heart has a lot to do with not only connecting, but deeply embodying, yeah? That which we're truly a part of. In these days, when I come to you in this moment, where I feel my feet are, have their own place as a part of existence, right at the heart of the earth. I really feel the energy of the earth pulsing in this body, a body designed to feel its connection to life, to feel as a field of being that it is embedded in a larger field of being that interconnectedness, that inner relationship, that interdependence in the web of life and to see and feel it for yourself is the place where peace lives. It is the global heart. We have access to it. We're designed to be able to access that in the smallest ways and in the largest ways. That law of correspondence that you find deeply embedded in African spirituality and indigenous wisdom and Buddhism, wherever you go, where people have been listening to the earth and paying attention to this interconnectedness, you recognize that these bodies carry the sentient intelligence and the sensorium gateways that allow us to make those connections. And yet, many of us human walking on the planet have not been given the opportunity in our education, nor in our conditioning to really rise to that which is innate. And yet here we are in this beautiful time of emergence where I have friends like Stephen Lovink, who's also on the call originally from the Netherlands, living now in France. A great companion, Laura Madden. Don't know who else has joined. I know many from Australia talked about coming. Hope they found their passcodes. <laughs> but here's the deal. We are in this moment when there is such disruption and corruption, which I call the ruptured heart right, our broken hearts. There's a space opening up in this time that if we don't divert from it, but go into it, will give us access to our existence, a way of thriving, being on earth. And it depends on not only that glorious heart we have, but connecting it, that heart that has neurons to the brain itself, that upper Dantian and the lower Dantian. Those three centers have the wiring we need to track each other and to be a part of a great blossoming of humanity, which I see is our absolute story that is rising now as we take care of the planetary being as it has always taken care of us. So restoring the connection to the earth is vital to the revival of the global heart. I hope what I said made sense because I just opened my field of being and let it be what it is with an intention that it lands in a way that's helpful. And Joe, I just thank you for being, just thank you for being and doing from that being what's yours to do. That's what's upon us for all. That's waiting for all of us to just follow into the being and let the work come from there. Sending my love out to all of you and turning it over to you, Joe. Oh, <laughs> I love what you say. I would, I would love to give you a couple more minutes if there's anything you have to share. Just, uh, I mean, it's just remarkable that you're, you're working with how many mayors? a few dozen mayors along the Mississippi. Uh, yeah, Laura, 
We're working with a few mayors, and I and I call me, uh, Laura uh, an acting mayor at this point. Mm -hmm. But yes, there are. Uh, there's a uh, the rivers and cities of the Mississippi River, of which we're focused on, which is has 32 states and their watersheds that drain into it. There are a group of 69 mayors that are organized and focused on the river. They do extraordinary work, not only bioregionally and in their local communities, but globally. Very efficient group of mayors. Impressive. I bring, I bring that up because it's remarkable that this idea of, you know, how can what, what I call creative social activism, yes, that how can we take our gifts, take our passions from our hearts, and there's so many remarkable ways that we can be of service to the planet and to those beings on the planet. And you have found your way into um, engaging, and it seems like Laura as well, and I guess uh, Steve as well, working with, uh, hello, Steve, leuk kom je te ontmoeten. To find your way, in, even into civic engagement, to bring these high principles, uh, high, highest principles of human beings into the UN. And, and it's just an inspiration to me uh, that, that, that that's possible. We can all find our own way. And that as I, I always say, if there's ever a moment when it's needed, it's now. Well, Joe, we just finished uh, a major effort of bringing uh, leaders from around the world into a, what we call the Leaders Pledge for Nature. It took uh, six weeks at the earliest. By the time we had the first countries endorsing the pledge, we had the, uh, the usual allies like Costa Rica uh, join and endorse the pledge. Then the Council of the EU last week gave permission for van der Leyen to endorse uh, the pledge. And by the time we came out of embargo yesterday, and you all can look at this online, because we had to do the whole General Assembly meetings online, uh, the leaders came forward at 70 plus strong. And that was just the work of us ordinary folk on the ground who work globally together, who put together a zero draft of a leader's pledge and felt we needed to help increase the global ambition and the environment for moving in the direction we need to move. Uh, and we, we feel that putting nature at the center of that and listening to the earth at this time is one of the fastest ways forward. And so you can go and listen yourself to the statements of these leaders. But as you do that, it's really in, as we were looking at the pledge, we were looking at what were we willing to do? Yeah? yeah, it's an all hands on deck moment here on Life on Planet Earth. It's not anything that we abdicate over to leaders. Leaders don't get it done. Leaders can convey though our values and what we're willing to do. So it's really the tipping point and the regime shift is in the social contract we will all engage in together. And that has to include a sense of, it has to be equanimous. It, it must be uh, a recognition of the intelligence and sentience and right to thrive and exist for all beings without exception, moving toward no harm and creating and setting a table where all can sit. And I think this is really important. The, fresh, the, the Freshwater Summit could have been any other thing, but who can argue, uh, any human arguing against fresh water is a human I wanna meet. <laughs> well, thank you, Myra. I know you really touched my heart. And um, I want to take this into the practice, if you'll all join me in this. Um, and that this is the point, is that we gather and we're all considering this idea of what does it take to revive the global heart. And as we, work, as we practice together, as we share together, and we gather in this medium called the World Wide Web, we have an opportunity to use this medium to connect with one each other. And what I say, weave a golden thread of lasting peace throughout the planet. And we get to, um, as, as a spider would do in her web or, or their web, 
create really basically weave in and that's a lot of indigenous cultures will say that in the practice of creativity what do you want to weave into this web and we use this practice to do that from our hearts so i'd like to invite you into this practice taking myra's beautiful teachings and her inspiration and her and and, and all she has to offer all of your uh commitment to show up and to be in community like this so I will lead you in this practice. It's, um, it's based on a practice that I've, that I've developed called the core exercise from the respectful confrontation method that, that I developed. Starts with getting in contact with your core. So let's start first with sitting in a way that feels where we can get the most flow. This practice helps us as we get into our hearts to align with our core, align with our heads, as Myra said, bringing in alignment to three dantians, two with the heart to move through the world with a, from resilience and fierce compassion with a sense of presence, awareness, balance, and flow. Coming into alignment with all, all beings in the planet itself. So in that process, in this practice, we sit in a way where, we can, where the most flow can happen within our, 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 our bodies and in our energy systems. So sitting in a way where your spine is straight without being rigid, elongating from the back of your neck, so you're tucking in your chin a little bit, Relaxing your jaw, relax your shoulders, relax your belly. And bringing your attention to your lower belly, to your core, which is approximately the width of three fingers below your navel and a third of the way into the body. So if you'd like to investigate that, if you put your fingers together, place your index finger over your navel where your pinky resides, that's approximately the width of three fingers below your navel. Now bring your attention inside of your body about a third of the way from the front of the body, placing your full attention on that spot. We call this your core or your center, your center of gravity, impulse, creativity. And I would say is this is where your personal power resides. And it is your center of awareness. According to Taoist traditions, this lower Dantian is how you perceive reality. Your heart or the middle of your chest is where your consciousness resides. And your brain is a transmitter of information going in and out. So bringing your full attention to your center. No right way to do this practice, wrong way to do this practice. It's about finding your way, coming into a deeper level of awareness and relationship with the present moment. From your center, become aware of the parts of your body that are connecting with the floor or what you're sitting on. Seeing these as your contact points. <clears throat> and with the awareness and say sensation of your body, of gravity bringing you closer to these points, feeling that sense of being held. The message that goes to the brain, the brain activates appropriate hormones, rewiring the system to remember and know that the earth is always holding you. And she does not discriminate. She holds each one of us equally. And from your center, become aware of your physical body. Cultivating a deeper level of listening. How is your body speaking to you? The wisdom of your body through sensation, heart rate. Breath. From your center, become aware of your emotional body. What emotions are you present to in this moment? Which, some, which ones seem to be most on the surface? Knowing that all emotions are welcome, all sensations are welcome.
from your center, become aware of your thoughts. Not necessarily what are your thoughts, but how are your thoughts in this present moment? Tight and judgmental or spacious and generous. And maintaining a connection with your core, which is the foundation of this practice. Now bringing awareness to your heart or the middle of your chest where your heart power resides. Compassion, understanding, respect, dignity. And from your center and from your heart, become aware of that part of you that might have connection to something larger than yourself. And from that part of you, becoming aware of in this moment what your connection might be to something larger than yourself. That could be something spiritual, it could be the planet in its entire biosphere. It could be your highest values, it could be humanity. In this present moment, recognizing your connection to something larger than yourself. And with more of an awareness of yourself in this present moment, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, from your center and from your heart, take a full breath in, in through your nose, and out through your mouth. Now with more of an awareness of yourself in this present moment, from your center and from your heart, keeping your eyes closed, become aware of your surroundings. in all directions, behind you, above you, sounds, smells. Placing yourself in a context, considering how you might be influencing your surroundings and how your, influ your surroundings might be influencing you. And with more of an awareness of yourself and your surroundings in this present moment from your center and from your heart, take a full breath in, in through your nose, out through your mouth. And now with more of an awareness of yourself and your surroundings in this present moment, from your center and from your heart, become aware of those in this meditation circle. Various people from various places in North America, various places of Europe, perhaps other parts of the world. What is it like from your personal power and your heart to connect with honor and respect with the personal power and the heart of others? In this meditation circle we're creating at this moment. Considering how you might be influencing others and how they might be influencing you. And with more of an awareness of yourself, your surroundings, and those in this meditation circle from your center and from your heart, take a full breath in. And with this awareness of yourself, your surroundings, and those in this meditation circle, building on this expansion of the heart and awareness, from your center and from your heart, become aware of all human beings beginning with those human beings that you would label loved ones. Observing what faces come to mind or what groups of people come to mind. Considering how you might be impacting them at this moment, are they you? Allowing energy to flow and emotions to flow. Expanding on this now from your center and from your heart, becoming aware of those human beings that you would label stranger. Considering that most likely we're talking about more than 7 billion beings at this moment, how many of those beings arise in your heart? 
Do you see faces? Do you see groups of people? Could be a neighbor. Could be an image of a face you saw in a newspaper. How might you be influencing them at this moment and they you? And from your center and from your heart, becoming aware of those beings that you would label adversary. Notice how that stretches your heart or influences your heart. The possibility from your personal power and your heart connecting with the personal power and the heart of those that you would consider adversaries. What faces arise in your heart? What groups of people? How might you be influencing them at that moment and how they you? With more of an awareness of yourself, your surroundings, those in this meditation circle, and all human beings, regardless of how you label them as loved one, stranger, or adversary, from your center and from your heart, take a full breath in and through your nose, and now through your mouth. And just taking a moment and do an inventory, noticing the effects of the practice so far, has that created an expansion in your heart and your energy field on all levels? Considering what would it be like to may be able to maintain this? And as you hold all human beings in your heart right now, just imagine in your connection with all of them that one being comes up with the idea that cycles through every being to say, hmm, what if we all devoted a large amount of time and energy to this lovely planet? An aha from every, every human being on this planet. I see joy on their faces. And creative energy to get going. And as you take all human beings with this image that you have, this possibility of a joint effort to be stewards to this planet, bring them close into your heart. Take them with you into your heart as we narrow our focus back to those in this meditation circle. So bringing the entire human family with you as you bring your focus and awareness back to those in this meditation circle sharing this experience now with this circle with honor and respect. Bringing all of those in this meditation circle into your heart as you now bring your focus and attention and awareness back to your surroundings. In fact, bringing the, the whole human family and those in this meditation circle with you into your surroundings, your immediate space. And taking the surroundings into your heart as you now bring your awareness and focus and attention back to yourself. Remembering that you too are one of those beings and the human family that deserves your heart and your personal power with honor and respect. Before we close this practice, again, just noticing, doing an inventory physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And imagine as, as you continue to do this practice, a rewiring happens within you that you can actually walk the planet with the state of being and who you are at this very moment. Resilience, fierce compassion, connection. And as a way to close this practice, let's take one final breath in, in through your nose. 
out through your mouth. When you're ready, slowly open your eyes, look around the room, stretch your body, shake your body. So we started with our motivation, hearing those beautiful wise words from Myra. We've done our practice. We, um, before we end with the dedication, we have time now to reflect. We have a few minutes. Is there anyone who would like to um, share your experience of the practice or, 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 or your reflections on what Myra was saying? Feel free to unmute. Yeah, I, I would like to. Myra, um, that touched me deeply. Um, fresh water. Oh my, uh, I grew up in a place where water, the awareness that water is precious was very present. Water is precious, whether we know it or not. And, and so much of the trouble in the region that are attributed to politics or, or religion, I think actually stem from our feeling like we can own the earth. So water rights become an issue and air rights become an issue and land and borders. And I wish we could reconnect to a more first nation mindset where these things are not ownable it's not like we do such a great job taking care of them just because we think we own them. So, you know, just give them back, just give them back. And thank you for connecting me to that core belief. Appreciate it. I'll go. Um, I, uh, I really felt the um, getting back to the earth. Um, this past weekend, I, I abandoned my job on Friday and I took Friday, Saturday and Sunday for me. And every moment of that was spent outside with my bare feet touching the earth. I went to the ocean and stuck my feet in the ocean. I didn't find a very sandy spot, but I was determined to march on those rocks and feel every one of them. Um, walked in, you know, around a, a lovely town looking at some statues and there was just this beautiful grass and I just had the need to take my shoes off and just scrunch my toes right up in the grass and just really feel the earth. I've been feeling very desk bound for the last couple of weeks and I needed that reconnection to the earth and just Maya's, Myra's words today just brought all of those feelings back to me. So it's like I didn't lose it after the weekend ended and I'm back to my desk again. So thank you. Well, if I may share, uh, Myra, thank you for that connection as well between the micro and the macro, how the water in the world and the water in our bodies. And as we are caretakers of water, not owners of it, in a way, we're also caretakers of this body and all the elements of it. And the body arises and passes by itself, and we look after it for a little while. And, and this sense of care, caring for ourselves, uh, may that also extend to caring for this planet the same way. Thank you for that gentle reminder. Myra, I was so moved and loved every minute of it. And um, I really could feel the water, you know, the, the fluid, the part of water, I guess, that's blood that flows in us, which is uh, then reminded me of this is it's so relevant for the the heart and the movement of of blood through the body and the water and how it's just all so absolutely um, essentially connected. So thank you. Yeah, 
Myra, I want to thank you so much for what you shared and the beautiful reminder of how uh, the body is designed to, to connect to the earth and um, that the water in us connects to the water of the earth. I, um, I live in the desert southwest in the Sonoran Desert and as you were speaking, I kept thinking about a group that we have here called the Watershed Management Group and their passion is well, they're a cooperative effort. So community members across Southern Arizona are redesigning their yards and their communities to hopefully design the earth to allow the water to go back into the rivers here to restore the rivers. And um, when that cooperative effort happens, in my experience, the community that is built through that shared passion of everybody being able to do that one little bit that they can do in their backyards or in their streets to help the water return to a flow, to return to um, a place where it can do the most good. And there's a big passion of helping the indigenous people here, the Autumn Nation, to get their river back that's been stolen. So um, we'll see, but thank you so much for that. And um, I felt such a strong connection to, to so much of what you shared. Thank you. Myra, if you have any reflections, you want to be more, more than welcome to, to share. I thought others have as well. We have another couple of minutes. All of that was just so right in the streaming. Uh, you can really feel the reciprocity at play, right? We're really here as a result of her grace. I, you know, when that hits me, I, I get bowled over all the time. This exquisite planet calibrates within a very small range, just what's needed to support the biodiversity here. And what would happen, and this goes to Cindy's point, if each of us turned toward the elements, not only within us as Bhaskar, Bhaskar was speaking to, um, of the immediate environment that is us, embedded in the larger environment, and thought about making a contribution from the fractal that we are of the whole, right? For the planetary being and its design to flourish. We'd all be taken care of in that. And yes, things would just naturally fall away like ideas of owning. Not only have we been a people thought about owning land, but we've thought about owning people and other beings for our purposes. And it's, it's not the model we see replicated in the natural world, natural law, universal law. We don't see that. We see life in counsel, life in communication, everything having its place of existence and ways of expressing and being and caught up in this wonderful web of communication. And we see forms coming and going because that which we're a part of are beyond form. And so it's so, you know, imagine that, uh, returning ourselves to that. Look at the many ways that water changes form. <laughs> if we just looked at that, we could see how to be. So Cindy, thank you for, the, for really calling out the thoughts about um, living in the Sonora Desert, knowing that there's water in the planet below the surface waiting to be called and summoned up. This is that time of emergence when those very kinds of things by our collaboration with the planetary being can occur. The planet's just waiting for us, listening to us, just waiting for us to recognize that when we rebond, right, we can restore the sacred connection and we can see the impossible become possible. Hmm. Okay. If that wasn't a moment to, <laughs> to, to, to do our dedication, I can't, couldn't think of 
another moment. Thank you, Myra. I, I'm so grateful. I get to have these conversations with Myra and I'm so grateful that other, now you get a chance to experience that as well. Um, the more we share Myra, that's good for her, of course, um, the better a world it's gonna be. So thank you for joining us. Um, as, so we, we started with our motivation, we did our practice, we had a chance to reflect and now we dedicate. It's, I always say that it's a, it's, it's a statistical miracle that this 35 to 40 people gathered if you think of the number of beings on this planet, let alone human beings, that we um, at this time came together to share this, the richness of this discussion and this practice. So let's honor that statistical miracle um, and say that in the energy that we generated here, that we get to choose on some level where we would like to see that directed, for, of course, for the good. So for yourself, in your own heart, in your heart, just to consider people you know, maybe you, maybe people you know in your life who could use a little bit of this kind of energy, connective heart energy, restorative energy, revive, reviving energy, organizations or institutions that you know could use some support, people out on the streets who are trying to have their voice heard, may they be heard. People who are, who, who are tr struggling and trying to understand, may they actually understand and listen. May each one of us find our own way to being a steward of service to this planet and to one another, the greatest gift we can offer. And may all beings on this planet have enough fresh water to drink and food to eat. And may all governments and leaders govern from a place of wisdom as opposed to fear and greed. Take one final breath to close this. Thank you all for gathering. For those of you who come regularly, it's always great to see you. For those of you who are here for the first time, thank you for coming. I always say tell a friend or eight and have them come and join us. We meet every week at this time. In three weeks time, our guest is gonna be Baskar, who you've heard a little bit from. He's gonna share a little bit of his wisdom. Um, next week, you're stuck with me, sorry. <laughs> and um, check the respectfulconfrontation.com website. We have some amazing events coming up to be of support to you in this time of uncertainty and anxiety and, and the practice of self-empowerment um, and finding your voice, authentic voice. And Myra, thank you. And um, to all of you, thank you. And have a great week and be well. Thank you. Thank you.